I think what's actually significant is not the way that culture was shaped by TV, but the way that TV is shaped by culture. Good morning, Hank. It's two. You're here. Welcome to the New TV Aware. Thank you so much. Um, you don't have to say welcome, actually, because I am the CEO. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's great. He's been doing um, it. He's been packing socks all day. Yep. Being people. Awesomesocks.club. I'll tell you what, after spending a day at the warehouse packing the socks and learning about the processes that go into getting and shipping out the coffee and the socks, I believe more than ever in this company, the people who work here are so awesome, as you know, Hank. I don't want to sound like a CEO, but I've never been so enthusiastic about a for-profit, <laughs> for-charity venture in my entire life. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for helping out. Yeah, it's great to be um, here. I'm feeling okay right now. How are you? Yeah, right now. I'm about to feel worse in about four days. I So, I want to stop you there, yeah. and I want to ask you a serious question. Okay. And I know that we've been jokety-jokety this whole time, and that's good. I want to stay jokey-jokey, <laughs> uh -huh. but I do think... Like, you and I both have this instinct to, in hard times, say, blah 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 it sucks, but. Yeah. And we both have it, we put the positive gotta, spin on it. It's very hard to not say but. It's very hard to not say but when you're talking about difficulty. And what I, what I guess I would want to emphasize is that you are doing amazing, you are, as they say, tolerating the treatment brilliantly, etc., etc., but uh, this sucks. Yeah. Like you, this sucks. You get really sick. It sucks. Yeah, it's, for, it's legit. Like the, the chemo has a reputation that it has earned. Oh. Uh, is, is how I came out of it. Yeah. I can count on two hands the number of times I've seen Hank take a nap. <laughs> Not um, anymore. <laughs> and like a yeah. bunch of times I've seen you take a nap, it's because you're really, really seasick on a boat you don't no, want to yeah, be on. I do. That is it. it feels kind of similar to that. Like the, you're on a boat you don't want to be on, and yeah. you are kind of seasick. And then nobody else is on the boat either. Right. You're alone, alone on a boat. On a boat. And there's a lot of people who are on shore like, do you need anything? And you're like, I'd like to not be on the boat. And you, and then they're like, sorry, yeah, that's, stay on the boat. That's the one thing I can't do. <laughs> I gotta let you gotta stay you're on the really, boat. You're really inseparable from the boat at the moment. <laughs> we need you on the boat. And I'm like, I don't know a lot about boats. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't either, but you got this, buddy. Here's some YouTube videos about boats. <laughs> YouTube's like, would you like boat videos? YouTube's like, I, do, I, see, sure. I see that you like boat videos. Um, that means would you like boat disaster videos? <laughs> <laughs> I see how much you're enjoying these boat disaster videos. You know, planes also crash. <laughs> Yeah. I'd like to show you I'm some totally plane crash videos. That has happened. I know. I get, I get chronic me. illness of other kinds of illnesses videos. Because we have the yeah. same YouTube, yeah. I also experience this. Uh -huh. um, and it's great in a way, right? Because it is... <laughs> <helps>. <laughs> what? Says the guy who's not on the boat. You I'm see not. dad out there just like trying to save it's that tree? Just our dad is out in the... He's just making a phone call being yeah, like, I don't know if this tree... landscaped a bit. To be fair, the tree doesn't look well. No, it's alive, though, so it is, wor it is worth his efforts. For sure. Yeah. For sure. The tree's on its own boat. The tree's on its own boat. <laughs> Except the difference is that it's not alone. It has Dad there on the boat. I, I have Dad, too. Yeah, not it's... in the same way. <laughs> like, Dad can't just, like, stake you to the ground and be like, there you go. No. Stand it straight up again. That's Dr. Carl's job. Doc, we love you, Dr. Carl, because it's really the biases within culture that allow infectious disease to spread, right? Like, that's the vector. At this point, yeah. Right. We're, we're fairly new to that yes. experience. Right. A lot of times in, in the sort of healthcare journey, people are like, why is it so bad? Um, and like, lots of reasons. But, but it's easy to forget that 100 years ago, you didn't expect to be cured of a disease. Right. The main thing the doctor told you was... You, uh, like, what... My, which which direction yeah. you were headed in. Yeah. So there's that, but there's also the fact that, like, it does feel vaguely medieval a lot of times. Like, the treatment for chronic right. illness, chemotherapy that, like, destroys your immune system doesn't feel super 21st century to me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, uh, well, the thing is, there, the, it's, it's quite tricky, and we didn't know this until we did it, to distinguish between diseases that are easy, it turned out to be quite easy to cure. Right. And diseases that were very hard to cure. Yeah. So when, when people first started figuring out how, like, antibiotics worked, they were like, holy crap. And, like, you know, life expectancy increased by 30 years over the course of 30 years. Yeah. And and then they were like, okay, well, let's do that with cancer then. 
And they're yeah. like, no, it turns out we can. But do a virus and that feels like a cancer. conspiracy. Yes. But it's not. It's just hard. Right. It feels like cancer should have been easy to cure in the same way that strep throat was easy to cure. Yeah. It's not even one disease. Like, strep yeah. throat is one disease. Yeah. Cancer is a well, lot of yeah, diseases. It, it's, I have started to think that it's silly of us to think of cancer as one disease when it's like saying a vir- like the idea of a virus is one disease. Someone in our family just got diagnosed with basal cell carcinoma, which sounds like a cancer because it has carcinoma in it, and it is a cancer, except that because the survival rate is 100%, nobody really says they have cancer. Right. Because we associate cancer they don't, with, they don't with, even, with jeopardy. They don't even include it in like, the cancer stats. I've learned a lot about cancer in the last couple of months. I think. Um, and one of the, I mean, one of the big things we both learned is how uh, unequal access to treatment is, like both in the United States or like in rich countries, but especially between rich countries and poor mm-hmm. middle income countries. Yeah. It's shocking. Yeah. E- even with a disease that's very treatable and like we know exactly the drugs you need to get. Right. And yeah. they're not that expensive. They're not. Like the Hodgkin's drugs are not that expensive. Yeah, yeah. My chemo is the cheapest part of my treatment. Really? It's cheaper than the scams. Wow. Now, if I had to switch over to the new one, because a lung problem, mm. it would go from $300 a treatment to, I think, $15,000. What, 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 what? what a good system. Um, <laughs> Dr. Carol Mitnick recently had an idea for me that had never crossed my mind in my 45 years of being alive, which was, what if we treated illness not as an opportunity um, to maximize value but as an opportunity to extend the quality and length of human lives and like i was like well what, how, how would we do that yeah. and she was like oh we've done it before like what's wikipedia <laughs> except an effort to <laughs> extend the quality and length of human lives yeah in a not-for-profit kind of certainly way certainly in the quality anyway I don't know if it's the, I got an honor, no? Uh, I feel like Wikipedia has already extended the length of my life. Wikipedia was like, here's the here's a concept for you called micromorts, which tells you every activity you do, oh. how many minutes of your life does it decrease? Wow. What's the worst ones? Boats, I bet. <laughs> Both kind of boats. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of micromorts. <laughs> a lot of micromorts in boats these days. Um Boats, boats aren't great. Uh, motorcycles <laughs> up there, not the best. You know what's got even more micromorts than parasailing, actually, is uh, free solo rock climbing. Oh, I bet. That's a heavy micromort. Even if you're good at it, and which I'm not. So for yeah. me, it would be like a million micromorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which adds up to one mort. <laughs> exactly. Like, however, however many micromorts you need to get to to get to <laughs> <that's a> one point <laughs> zero morts. <laughs> which reminds me, Hank. Yeah. At VidCon, uh-huh. there was a pit that you could jump into mm-hmm. to get a squish mallow. Okay. Yeah. I know. And my children jumped into the pit. And they each got two squishmallows. Oh wow! In that the pit, like a lot. in the, and it was like a full. I, I watched them jump. It's like fifteen feet down. And I was like, "This is so great because now you have a squishmallow, and you have a squishmallow, and you can both give your lovely cousin Orin a squishmallow." And they said, "If you want to give Orin a squishmallow, you've got to jump into the pit." And so I did. I look like an eagle in flight. You've never seen something or someone so graceful. And the best part is after I go down through all of the Squishmallows, land deep, deep inside the bottom of the pit of Squishmallows, the first thing you hear my squeaky little coward voice say is, well, that was thrilling. (laughs) (laughs) That's terrible. That's terrible. I have a new chemo symptom. It's very weird. Oh, what is it? I, for the first time in my life, I've gotten two ocular migraines. Oh, like with the auras? Yeah, with oh. no pain. I had pain that came, once. Pain came after, so like I when it was once. happening, no pain at all. And I was yeah, like, that's what, what it usually is. It's like warning of the pain to come. And it did hurt very bad after. Oh, the second time. But uh, I mean, much scarier than what it is because I was like, oh yeah, yeah, because you it feels like you're hallucinating. Feels like I'm hallucinating. Yeah, it was in both eyes, mm-hmm. so it wasn't like an eye problem. It's a brain problem, mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, so I'm having a stroke. Mm-hmm. So you've got the ocular migraines. Yeah, that's a real. That was weird. Very unpleasant. Happened while I was watching Wipeout. 
And I was like, I can't see Wipeout? You know, there's a lot of things that I used to think sucked. Wipeout is a good example. That it turns out that like they're just a gift of a different kind. That's right. They're a show for a different moment than the moment I'm in, maybe. Mm -hmm. But they're not a bad show. Mm -hmm. They're just a show for a different person at a different time. I watched like a 19 minute video, probably because you're messing with my algorithm so much, uh, that was just every person who's completed Wipeout over like 25 years. Wow. And it was, <laughs> they weren't all, they weren't all gazelles. <laughs> <laughs> but they all did it. They all made it. Dude, that's that's totally just still, he's still at it. You know what? I think that's, that the last shot of the video has to be the extraordinary yeah. work that dad is doing. Hank, you may be alone on the boat, but look how many people are trying to right that ship. If I extended the metaphor too far. Anyway, dad, you're the best. We love you. Hank, I'll see you right now.